So, hello everybody. This is the second video uh, which should demonstrate how the Soundtrack engine is working and what is happening here in um, our user list. Okay, uh, let's start um, from this part. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, here in the download section you can download the respective um, Soundtrack version depending on your operating system, so Mac, Linux or Windows, in that case it is um, it is the Mac. And uh, in case your application is not running, so it's shut down, now it's not running anymore, and you enter the stage, you will get this info. The soundtrack app is not working or installed, please check the download tab. All right, uh, but nevertheless, you still uh, can log in and you will see other users in this user list. So every single line corresponds to one single user and you are the one uh, at the end of the list. This is how uh, the whole thing is organized. So you basically see yourself in the user list, so don't get confused. But in case the application is not running, you will see uh, a red I symbol. So I for information. Here you get um, more information about um, the actual parameters, um, which I'm going to uh, explain a little bit later. But um, <coughs> be sure that you have a green icon, because otherwise you won't be able to connect. Green indicates that everything's fine. Uh, yellow indicates that the application is running, but the sounds sound cards are not configured properly. And, uh, and red means that the application is not running at all. This is what we have right now. And uh, if the application is not running at all, that automatically means that you have no entry in these two fields. This means uh, sound card input, and this means sound card output. Uh, and there's nothing in it because uh, the engine is not running, so the engine cannot de detect what c uh, sound cards uh, you have on your machine. So, um, in order to explain you all the other parameters on the left here, uh, we first need to make sure that the application is running. So I enter the dock, launch the application. Here, you see it's running. Now uh, get back, but you need to re-enter the stage. So right now the website does not automatically recognize that uh, the application has been relaunched. So simply relaunch the stage tab. So I've done this. And here we go. Now it's green. And that indicates that everything's fine. And now we have here the integrated microphone and here the integrated output. Uh, yeah, and let's start with the left side, so the sound jack settings. Here you can uh, choose uh, three different settings, um, so parameter settings. If we enter beginner settings, you have a reduced setup. If you use uh, advanced settings, you have more options to configure your sound card and uh, configure um, other aspects such as mm, compression ratio, so overall quality and uh, so far. And uh, expert settings, this is what uh, is activated now, give you all the whole set um, of um, possible parameters. I leave this on for now because I want to explain every parameter. And in fact, once you are familiar with every parameter, you have more power um, to find the perfect settings for your session and for your uh, environment. And uh, that gives you um, much more flexibility and I can recommend using the expert settings because, um, because of this. All right, so I explained this already. Here I have several others because uh, uh, I currently use this USB codec for the recording, I cannot choose it as an input or output device um, for soundcheck right now. This is why I'm using the integrated devices. Um, but as we see here, if I configure 
the input with the output device, the level meter turns red and that means nothing is working anymore. And here my status changes to, to yellow, which means that the application is, is running, but the sound card is not configured pro properly. Same thing if I pick microphone for output, which is of course not possible, same thing. Or any other not valid <coughs> configuration will turn your status yellow. So let's get back to the working setup, microphone integrated for input and output for output. And see, green. And then you see here the level meter is working. So that uh, shows you that everything's fine here. Uh, next thing, the sample buffer. That is the uh, amount of samples uh, for one respective audio block your sound card is capturing. And in fact, the lower the sample buffer size, the better the overall latency. However, some sound cards cannot handle very low buffer sizes, which is why we have 512 as the default, but you should manually see what is possible. So we now we see here 256 is still fine. The, the level meter is, is, uh, is peaking as usual and um, which you cannot hear right now, but I can actually hear what is what is happening on my machine. And in order to make this more clear, you can increase this fader here. So this fader, yeah, now, okay, what, what you hear right now, it's here. The feedback from my in uh, inbuilt microphone to the uh, to the the output because there are no headphones attached yet. But if you have solid playback here, you know that everything's fine. But again, this is just the local test. So the left side and this fader on this lever meters shows you everything regarding your loopback device. So what is happening on your machine? That's important. Okay, we don't want to get annoyed by the feedback, so I reduce it. Uh, but let's see what we can do. 128 samples, still working fine. 64 samples, still working fine. Um, just to let you know, Soundjack internally is working with 48 kilohertz, uh, which is not adjustable. This is actually the only parameter that is not adjustable for several reasons right now. And with 64 samples per block that corresponds to a loopback delay of twice 1.3 milliseconds, that is two dot, um, about 2.7 uh, milliseconds overall local latency. In fact, there are several other aspects that might increase the latency more, but this is at least the theoretical loopback latency you get at this point. Okay, uh, since this is working fine, I just leave it like this. So this is excellent. Actually, the the inbuilt micro, uh, the the inbuilt sound card uh, of the OS X of, of Macintosh computers is quite okay. Uh, and by the way, once you have changed anything, you automatically get here an audio status update message in your in your lock window. So this is all locked and tracked, um, and actually written into your user, user local um, database because all these settings when you log off and on again they are stored so you don't need to readjust them all over again so next step send channels so the ov obviously the amount of channels you want to send to somebody else you can adjust it from one two four eight sixteen um, these options you have and in that case, I leave it uh, as one. But if you leave it uh, to one, um, you must know that uh, internally Soundjack is working with two channels, but it mixes these two channels to one channel. In any other case, two, four, eight, or 16 channels, it leaves everything as is. Okay, um, this here uh, gives you the opportunity in case of a multi-channel sound card, like four or eight or 16 channels, uh, no, in the, uh, maximum eight channels right now, to uh, manually pick 
um, one respective or two respective channels uh, from the card. But if I pick channel 4 right now, it automatically makes the sound card turn red because um, the sound card has not four channels, it only has two channels, you know, just to let you know. Same thing here and here. If we have an eight-channel uh, card, that would work. But still, you need to know that this feature is still a little buggy. It is not working as good as I want it to work. Um, but yeah, it has two <coughs> channels, the inbuilt sound card, which is why I can manually pick this or this which is why it's working, but once I get here, it's not working anymore. Okay, I leave it at one channel, one sand channel. Um, this feature here um, is something I called uh, delayed feedback. You might find this strange, but I, 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 I um, show you what it means or what it actually does. Okay. Um, if it is set to zero, uh, you receive the the loopback signal immediately, so there is no additional latency. But if I increase it to the maximum, you will hear that the local loopback signal is delayed significantly. You see, I hit it. This is even more obvious if I increase the sample buffer size to 512 and I leave this delayed feedback at 99 buffers. Okay, now you uh, might wonder why uh, does it make sense to delay your loopback signal. Uh, this is something you could do in case you have um, latency beyond uh, a playable threshold of like 25 or 30 milliseconds more or less. If you have, for example, 80 milliseconds to somebody far abroad, it is possible to delay your own signal to a certain value in order um, to achieve uh, artificial synchronization. Okay, so this feature, in fact, for most of you is not very important, only if you want uh, to find an alternative uh, playable situation with somebody who's very far away in terms of latency, so basically beyond 25 milliseconds or far beyond 25 milliseconds, then that feature could help. Next is the network buffer size. The network buffer size is always a multiple of the sample buffer size. So if you have adjusted for example, 256, you cannot adjust a, a network buffer size lower 256, yeah? if I try to get here. And you cannot choose 64, by the way. So here, 128 samples is the limit also for several reasons, not to be explained in this video right now. Or again, here, sample buffer 512, and no way to adjust it lower than that. All right, and here again, same thing. The higher the network buffer size, the more stable the system. The lower the network buffer size, the lower the latency. However, there is a higher probability of audio dropouts and an instable system. So this is something you need to find out. In a local area network, for example, it is no problem to adjust 128 and very low buffer sizes. Uh, but uh, in, a, in a wide area um, network and uh, in unpredictable situation, uh, it is something you need to try out, basically. Uh, the question is always related to packet loss and to network jitter. These are the two aspects that um, have significance here. So basically try it out. I always try try 128 uh, and if that doesn't work I increase network buffer size to 256 but um, once you have uh, adjusted 512 uh, it is easily uh, to to, <laughs> to achieve latencies uh, beyond a playable threshold so with 512 uh, it is very unlikely that you can uh, have um, rhythmi rhythmical uh, musical interaction uh, with people abroad 
so I leave it at 128 for now. Next is the Opus codec, the quality. Or basically, uh, if you leave it at linear, there's not Opus, um, uh, it's not working, it is, um, it is bypassing uh, an um, audio codec. It sends out linear audio, which for one audio channel corresponds to 768 kbit per second. And if you want to compress your audio signal, uh, you have these four options. Uh, and there's then the Opus uh, codec being used. And um, the lower the kbit per second, of course, the lower the quality. However, we figure out in practice it is a good value um, to choose 96 kbit per second. Um, that always works as the default. With 48, sometimes you uh, might hear problems uh, with low frequencies and with 24 kbit per second, it is quite obvious that the quality has become pretty, pretty bad. And the last feature here is related to the user list and how um, you can interact with other users. Again, users on this side, this is the user list. Uh, manually accept calls means that if somebody wants to connect with you, you manually have to accept the call or decline it, of course, if you want. Except any call leaves out that process. In that case, you will automatically be connected to somebody who wants to address you. And decline any call means that you are in the user list, but any call that is coming in will be declined. So that was uh, the first introduction to the left side, the sound jack parameter settings, and uh, everything related to the user list and so far will be explained in the next video.